Hello everyone, uh, this is a submission video for Ori and the Blind Forest Definitive Edition. Uh, all, the category is going to be all cells, no OB slash TA. Uh, OB stands for out of bounds and TA stands for teleport anywhere, which is a glitch that uh, kind of breaks the game uh, <laughs> wide open. Uh, so this the timer is going to start as soon as we select our difficulty, which is normal. So that's going to be in 3, 2, 1. So one of the first things that you might notice is that we play with the UI off for most of the run. Uh, we need UI on for, for certain tricks, but um, most of the time it's just going to be off because uh, having the UI off uh, skips most of those text box that shows up. This one doesn't lose any time, but um, some of the dialogues that we uh, would have to skip otherwise uh, don't show up at all. And some text boxes that the game shows us when we pick up cells, like this one, don't show up at all because we have UI off. So this saves quite a bit of time over the run. And because Ori and the Blind Forest is a Metroidvania, we don't start with a lot of skills. We can only run and jump. But we're just about to pick up our first ability right here. So this is Sign, um, the, the Eyes of the Forest. Uh, we use Sign to attack enemies, basically. It's it's our bread and butter attack skill, uh, like we're gonna see right here. And now we're heading uh, into Sunken Glades to get our first ability. Sunken Glades is probably one of the most painful parts of the run to optimize, because uh, it's really dashless movement, so there's a lot of optimizations that uh, we have to do to make sure that we don't vault over walls or uh, do anything stupid. And we also have to manage our EXP routing, because EXP routing is very important in this game. Uh, we have two time level ups, one of which is mandatory for the run to be completable. That's fine. And we just did our first glitch called the ghost door. Um, so if we save with keystones into a door and die, the door despawns a bit when we reload the file. And we can use that to go through the door. It saves about 5 seconds. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit on the high side the XP wise. So the first time level up is coming up. Uh, this one's gonna exploit the fact that uh, level ups uh, create a shockwave around Ori that deals damage. And we're gonna use it to break some brambles uh, faster than the intended way. So those brambles to the right that I just went past, we're gonna break them with the level up. But first we get the first ability of the game, or well, the first actual ability, wall jump. Uh, obviously allows us to jump up walls. And we're gonna use it right here to get our second energy cell. And we can now get back to uh, not really where the game intends us to go at this point. So here's the time level up. Kills the slime, kills those rambles, uh, really fast, really good. So the game would normally expect us to go to the left after this, because we were supposed to pick up a keystone uh, up here. And then we're supposed to go see the spirit tree, which we're not going to do until a bit later in the run. For now we're going to head over to the spawn and get our second ability, which is dash. This dash uh, was added with the Definitive Edition. It's kind of a... Think of it as a DLC area, it's completely optional. And that's where we're headed right now. So 
So first trick coming up, uh, the save anywhere. We can store this uh, skill tree menu and use it to spend skill points anywhere, which saves the game. And we just use that to save inside of a cutscene, which skips the cutscene. Uh, most of the cutscene skips in this game involve saving inside the cutscene. Uh, so we're most of the time going to do that either with a save anywhere or a, a rekindle. And now we're down Blackbird Barrows. There is a really fast cycle that I'm going to try to go for once, but I'm not sure I might get it. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Okay. Alright, this is looking good so far. Just gonna place a safety save uh, below those lasers. Uh, it's not gonna work, yeah. Okay. So normally we can get a really fast cycle here, uh, barely catch those platforms, but we have to beat one extra laser, uh, which uh, I was unable to do. It's really, really tight, basically a global cycle because those lasers stay loaded basically every time, like any time we're in the area. Cycles here. We have to carry this orb all the way, so we have to wait anyway. Blackbird Burrows is kind of the auto scroller of the game. <laughs> like, there's not much going on, and somehow we still keep finding time saves in there. I like this save anywhere that's coming up. Uh, it's a fairly, uh, it's a fairly recent trick, uh, like a new use of it. So we're gonna save anywhere to not completely skip this cutscene. But we're going to skip part of it, and we're going to move during that. And we're going to rekindle our save and reload, and that's going to stack two cutscenes and allow us to move out of the dash tree blind. Like this. So I mentioned how important EXP running is. Uh, this is for this one trick that is coming up. Another property of level ups is that they refill our health and energy, and we're gonna use that to bring it to Moon Grotto by uh, essentially duplicating our energy. So we're gonna take this guy Billy down for a walk, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put two energy into a door, then level up off of him, and put another two, and that's gonna open this four energy door. Nice, got it. Uh, this area right here is pretty scary. It's called the death gauntlet because we don't have any energy at this point and we can't afford saving right here. All right, we're through. Another really tight cycle that I'm gonna try to go for. I can't guarantee I will get it, but who knows. Yeah, as expected. Uh, at least I get some energy to put a safety save here. We can normally beat those crushers, but it's really hard. Another ghost door right here. And now we're gonna get double jump. So once again, we're gonna move out of double jump blind. Oops. Uh, okay. <laughs> Not used to this uh, pattern. There we go. Uh, we just uh, used the save anywhere. Well, not really save anywhere, but we just spent a point uh, inside the tree cutscene. 
and that allows us to uh, basically ignore the cutscene. And we don't really have time to breathe in this run because there's another skip coming up right here. There we go, skips one minute of Grotto and a really important jump right here that the French communities uh, forced me to do. And you can see I just started a cutscene and rekindled inside of it and that just skipped it. That's what I mentioned with uh, skipping a cutscene by rekindling. It has some really interesting properties like freezing Gumo over here. Another rekindle skip. And now Gumo, the poor Gumo is going to stay here frozen forever. Like, even if we wanted to, we couldn't move him out because the trigger for the cutscene is gone. Alright, now we have Water Vein. Uh, so we have everything we need to complete the Genzo tree. But first, we're going to get this cell right here. And we're gonna go back through Moon Grotto in reverse. You can see this frozen Gumo that I just walked past, just activates now. Some shoutouts to the Slime Gandalf, notorious for not letting people pass. Whoops. Safety save. Uh, value. Oh my god, come on. Okay. Once again, the level up routing uh, is not mandatory, but it helps because it gets the frog out of the way. And this frog is otherwise really annoying. Uh, another rekindle skip coming up. Uh, this one's not gonna skip the cutscene, but we're gonna get control during it, and we're gonna basically stack two cutscenes together and get Ori in a really weird position. <laughs> and now we're inside of Ginsu Tree. So Ginsu Tree is a really technical area, lots of cycles, uh, some really precise movements. Like this dash off of the plant. And this room right here is filled with gamers as we call them. And there's a cycle that I'm gonna try to beat right here. Nice. Taking death right here to reset the cycle in this room. Uh, this puzzle is pretty fun. We don't actually need the second block that's up there. We could just kind of push this block down in time. Nice, I got the backflip glide. And now we do this mini boss, which is probably a good time for donations. <laughs> Because there's not much going on, we just kind of uh, kill the boss fast. Whoops, I missed the trigger. We don't have charge flame, so it takes longer than it should. That's fine. Whoops. Another ghost door right here, and we are uh, inside of Bash Tree. So now we have Bash, a uh, cool ability, allows us to um, bounce off projectiles and enemies basically, like this lantern right here. And we can use it in pretty interesting ways. So for example, we can use it to break walls, we can also bash off of the same thing twice if we do it uh, on the right frame, uh, like this projectile right here.
And I'm gonna turn UI on for this, so you can uh, take a close look at my keystone counts. So you can see I have three keystones even though my save is before the keystones. Uh, this is a trick called key duping. Uh, it allows us to, uh, to, if we take a death with keystones into a door and our save is far enough, the game gives us the keystones back and also places them into the world again so we can just get them again. Some cool rekindle trick here to gain massive amounts of speed. And this is the last thing we're gonna see in Genzo Tree. We're never actually gonna complete the escape. A little bit short on the XP, but that should be fine. So yeah, as I was saying, uh, we're going back to Mungrado and we're gonna break into Thornfeld Swamp without ever cleaning the water. Uh, this is gonna have some really interesting consequences later in the run. Uh, I should probably get this flower because of the XP. Once again, time level ups are not really mandatory, but they're really important to get right. Whoops. Another frozen Goomer right here. So we're gonna use our good friend Ringo. Whoops. Um, this is why you safety save before. We're gonna use our good friend Ringo to break into the swamp. With a cool combination of bashes and double bashes. We can actually get him to break the floor for us. And guess it get this ability sale while, while we are at it. Whoops. There we go. And we're in. Another rekindle trick. Uh, I'm not sure I got that one. No, okay. I was too close to the door. And now we have Stomp. Uh, I'm not sure there's much to explain about it. It's basically like a ground pound for, from Super Mario. Allows us to break floors and go down fast. Uh, so now we have everything we need to enter the left side of the map. Uh, but before that, we have to take a little detour through Thornfeld Swamp to get some cells. Uh, like this one right here, uh, really goes to show how powerful double bashing is. So we're gonna take this fish and double bash it all the way up and get the cell and dip. This skips having to come back way later in the game. And we're gonna use our good friend Ringo again who just got his name from this. Just plays a drum solo the entire time. <laughs> Whoops, I still have the cutscene skip right here. It's not a big deal. Only saves a few seconds. We're never gonna go come back through here anyway. So this is the ability cell that I mentioned. And now we're gonna, whoops. We're gonna double bash our way up again. So this pickup right here uh, is one example of stuff that's not a sell and that we don't get. This is only 200 EXP, so we don't actually need to get it as a requirement for the category. Gonna stomp this back down and hopefully, yes, land on a bounce pad, or he's just gonna bounce through the entirety of the cutscene. So now we're gonna move through Hollow Grove in reverse. We're actually supposed to be coming from the left here. 
But because we just broke into Moon Grotto earlier in the game, we never actually saw that part. Oh, come on. Another rekindle skip right here. Those blue walls, we can actually stomp from the right side. I'm not sure why. It's probably some hitboxes shenanigans. And now we're gonna get Charge Flame. We don't actually need Charge Flame, we just get it um, as part of a requirement for Charge Dash. Because that's how the skill tree is designed. And that means we're well on our way to get Charge Dash after we skip this cutscene. We only have one point left. Uh, charge Dash is probably the most broken skill in the entire game. Because we can charge dash at enemies and cancel the charge dash with something else and that refunds the energy. But most importantly we can do something called rocket jumps. Uh, if you charge dash an enemy and aim the charge dash up and cancel that C dash with a uh, double jump, uh, the game just kind of forgets to slow you down. And this is what happens. Uh, Sadly, I kind of rocket jumped into spikes right here, but we're gonna have some really cool ones coming up. Like this one right here. And another trick, really important one, uh, called the fast stomp -less. Now we're supposed to go to the left now and stomp a bunch of rocks, but instead I'm just gonna use the spider shots. Run away to deal with some rocks that are in the way. And now we have barely enough time to get this ability cell before we get warped into the cutscene by the shot in the rocks. The angle for the bash on the spider shot is like 3 degrees or something. Thankfully, we have visual cues for it. Just gonna get glide and move up. Uh, get this teleporter for a safety save. Also refills our energy as a nice side effect of it. So this is uh, an example of how cool charge dashing is. Uh, allows us to do something like this. And now we're not actually gonna go to Misty Woods. We're actually gonna bash our way into Sorrow Pass. Whoops. rocket jump here so we get this lever doesn't save much time it's just really nice barely lands on barely lands us on top of this platform right here another really tight cycle that I'm gonna try to go for here oh my charge dash didn't work cool that's fine so once we get this energy cell that's up top, we're actually going to come back down. And we're going to do some juggling shenanigans to get a frog to break a floor at the top of Sorrow Pass for us. So we're going to charge dash the frog a bunch and then cancel those charge dashes so that they don't hit the frog. This is called the Crazy Juggle. Uh, each charge dash is the 3 frame window to cancel before it hits. And now we're all the way to Sunstone. And we can do a save anywhere to skip this really long cutscene that's coming up. I got a menu bug, nice. It just happens sometimes, no one really knows why. Okay, now that we have Sunstone, we can actually go and get Charge Jump. Another quick Ghost Sword right here. Oh, 
Oops. And we're not gonna go down Sorrow Pass quite yet. We have a few cells that we still need to get. Like this one right here. And another one further down. Keystone on the way down because there are still a few doors that we're gonna have to open. So now we're actually gonna head down to Misty Woods, uh, one of my favorite areas of the game after a meteor kick of this bird. Oh, nice loading. <laughs> So Misty Woods is probably one of the most impressive sections of the game to watch. Because there's a lot going on, we have a lot of really cool movement options. Like, all you see is a combination of um, charge dashes, rocket jumps, and charge jumps. Take a quick detour to get this ability cell right here. Whoops. The reason I'm staying in the air right here is because um, if you stay in the air for long enough after picking up uh, an ability cell, or a cell, uh, the game just forgets to give you the text box at one point. Ow. Okay. And now we have Climb. Uh, it's not really a useful ability for now, but we're definitely going to use it later. For now, we get more really tight Misty movement. It's one of my favorite sections in the run. Um, it's really tightly choreographed. And we know exactly what we're doing at any point in time. Whoops. Some cool rocket zombies coming up. take some energy right here, not for a safety save right now, because this mini boss is really easy, we can just kind of kill it. And now we're gonna get this orb back to the altar. Uh, the reason we do this is because we need Gumon Seal. Because uh, we need to enter full on runes at one point in the run, because there is a cell here that we have to get. This is also kind of an auto scroller. Uh, the really annoying part is that those slimes can be a massive pain. They can kind of lock you in place if uh, their goo gets in the wrong spots. Thankfully, we're through, as we have 7 HP, so we can kind of tank. Uh, another cutscene skip, if you remember Blackwood Burrows, it's gonna be similar. Uh, we're gonna wait for a visual cue right here and get Gumon Seal and move out of Misty Woods blind. And there we go, we're through. So we're all the way back to the valley teleporter. Also messes up the camera as a neat side effect of it. Uh, thankfully it's gonna snap back to Ori right now. So 
from here starts the revisit section of the run. We're basically gonna clean up everything we know, like every area of the game. Cool meteor cake right here. Uh, gonna use this lever, uh, save during the animation, like save while the lever is on to make it a bit sticky. Break this floor, but we're not gonna go there quite yet. First we have one health cell that we have to get over here. And now we're headed down. Oh god, okay, that was that was scary. Save anywhere right here to skip this cutscene. This one's one of the longest in the game, it's like two minutes. And we have grenade now. So grenade allows climb to be extremely useful because if you throw a grenade on the frame before you charge jump off a wall, you get what's called a grenade jump and it's uh, it's very speedy. See that's a grenade jump. Um, basically throwing a grenade on the frame before we charge jump makes the game forget to slow Ori down. And we can just keep the speed from the charge jump. It's the fastest way to move in open spaces. So all skills uh, will probably leave Blackwood Bros at this point, but we still have to get cells and Cool grenade jump right here. Nice backflip. So I mentioned earlier that we never completed Genso Tree and that all the water is poisoned as a result. We have a very long swim coming up uh, at the very bottom of Lost Grove. Oh, goodness, okay. Thanks for the follow, Peter Stark. Through this cookie right here. Now, obviously, my notifications are not going to be on during the run. <laughs> Alright, so after some very specific weights to manipulate cycles. I'm going to get Ultra Defense and get going. This swim is especially annoying because of those Crusher cycles. We have to do a bunch of double bashes to get the fishes to show up at the right times. All of this for this single ability cell. That's not gonna work, whoops. So dying here is not a big deal because we can save again and saving gives us some HP back. So we can just do that and makes the swim uh, not easy still, but uh, it's a lot less tight and we're through. Oops, I'm out of energy. I'm not out of energy anymore. And now we're gonna head out of Lost Grove. Um, we're not gonna climb all the way back up. We're just gonna go through the teleporter. Uh, there's a cutscene, uh, the longest cutscene in the game that we're gonna have to skip first. Uh, thankfully, we can just kind of clip through the trigger with the grenade jump. And I'm supposed to level up at this point. This is not normal. Uh, there's some backups, that's fine. So because we just got triple jumps, we can do more stomp cancelling uh, out of C dashes. And now we're starting to clean up valley and uh, get on our way to full on ruins. Uh, before we can do that, there's another really long swim coming up.
This one we're gonna actually uh, use the fact that Ori can bash during cutscenes to get past the slug as it opens and get into the water early. Ori doesn't take damage from water while in cutscenes and just kind of sinks down. So now we have very little HP, so we're just gonna save and take some intentional deaths. So that's gonna heal up. Uh, whoops. Uh, this cycle's kind of weird, but that's fine. This swim is not as tight as the Lost Grove swim, because we don't have to do a bunch of double bashes to get through. Alright, and we're out. So now we can actually head to Forlorn Ruins. Uh, don't mind the camera. This is what happens when loading exists, I would say. Some cool meteor kit right here. Uh, this one actually sometimes goes faster than the game can load the next scene. So we can kind of clip out of bounds if the loading doesn't go properly. Another cool grenade jump here. And now we are inside Forlorn Ruins. Uh, so we're just gonna charge jump over this cutscene trigger right here. That I missed. Uh, I can just reload, no big deal. It's faster to reload than try again, because this cutscene is like 12 seconds. There we go. Stomp this slime, and grenade throw ray up. So the orb just spawns there, I'm not sure why. Whoops. Two saves anywhere in a row coming up. Uh, this first one and the second one. So we have a bunch of ability points at this time, so we can just kind of uh, get some stuff that's slightly faster, like this one. 50% uh, more energy from drops is really good. And this one, which allows us to do some cool movement later on. So we're not gonna skip this yet, we're gonna skip the next part of this cutscene. There we go, hopefully I can get a really tight laser cycle right here. Nice, got it. And while we're waiting for the cycle, I'm just gonna do color code to change Ori's color. It doesn't actually do anything. It's just really cool. Whoops. Uh, the next run, I'm gonna wait for the next cycle. Uh, okay. Uh, I do not know the cycle at all. Okay. And now we're done with Forlorn Ruins, uh, we can start the uh, actual cleanup phase, starting with Moon Grotto right here. So starting from here is just a bunch of really cool late game movements, just like charge dash cancels, grenade jumps and the likes. Tight cycle on those crushers.
Uh, there's a really tight cycle with those crushers up top. I'm not sure I can go for it. Yeah, okay. Don't want to take the risk. Uh, some really cool grenade jump coming up. Uh, all the way up Gumu's lair. Mungrelo's now over, uh, we're gonna start cleaning up plates. Whoops. Uh, cool grenade jump right here. Uh, this one always gets you a slow load on this scene. A jump that also sometimes messes up the loading. <laughs> Oops, messed up the granny jump. Second try, nice. So this laser, we're supposed to get this rock down and climb on it, but we can just do this. Now we're actually going back through Hologrove in the right way this time. But the movement's just a little bit different from what we're supposed to have casually. And now here's where the movement starts being crazy, because we have a bunch of energy cells in the short time. So we can just kind of spam charge dashes without worrying about the consequences energy-wise. You can see I have almost all my energy, despite just spamming them all the way. Charge dashes normally cost one energy. Killing this guy so it doesn't bother us later. And getting a final Lost Grove, uh, Hollow Grove ability cell. Oh my god, please. Safety save right here, because those... Um, this burning ground right here is deadly no matter how much energy you have. Oh my god, we just got stomped by that rock. <laughs> it just happens sometimes. Oops. At this point, we don't really need to care about cancelling our trash dashes anymore. Because we can just kind of... We know we're going to get a bunch of uh, energy soon, so we don't need to care. And now we actually enter Mount Haru. 
So the sole reason why we have to go into Mount Horror, aside finishing the game of course, is because of one energy cell that's uh, all the way up top, so you, we're gonna have to pay uh, the top right room a visit. Just doing some really cool rocket jumps to get up. So upcoming is a trick called menu, um, sorry, game storage. So if you menu really fast, the game doesn't store some cutscenes properly, and we can just kind of move during them. Uh, this shouldn't have worked. There we go. So right now, if I wasn't at the entrance of Mount Haru, the cutscene would be playing. And before we get ready for our final save anywhere, uh, we're gonna get this energy cell. So this save anywhere is a little bit complicated. Well, not really, but it's like... Um, so... Pushing down this rock is gonna trigger a cutscene that's gonna spawn Ori at the entrance of Mount Horu, and we're gonna save during that cutscene. That's gonna put Ori right next to the uh, entry door, and we're gonna use that door to warp at the end of Mount Horu. Uh, if I can get it. Nope, not this one's. Second try. Okay, second try, cool. So that's called Door Warp, uh, skips the entirety of Mount Haru. And we're gonna do another instance of game storage right here to skip the warmth return cutscene. And do some cool grenade jump during the final escape. None of those grenade jumps are actually required. Oh, I am really low on health. So one final grenade jump coming up. Uh, this one's gonna stack to cutscenes later. The positioning for this one is really precise. And if you do it wrong, you can self lock the game and you have to do the entirety of escape again. And some really cool stuff happens if you have UI on there. Uh, Ori's just gonna start flying in place. And the feather is just here and then Kuro just comes and it's, it's really weird. And final inputs of the round coming. Uh, time is gonna come up where, when Naru gets past the second tree that's in the foreground. Uh, we can actually do some really cool hops. Those lose this time, but they get you some really cool... You, you get some cool points. <laughs> and that was time. So that was already in the Bank Forest. Uh, just checking that we got all cells. Yes, we do. So the final time for this run was 48.06. Uh, that was actually really good. It was like 11 seconds off my PB. So yeah, I think that's all I have to say for this. Um, so 4806 is a really good run. Uh, I will put estimate at 55 minutes so that even on a really bad run I'm uh, basically 99% sure that I can complete the run under estimate. And thank you for watching this submission video and I will see you around hopefully in GDQ. Bye!